so close. It's not that close. It's a white. It's, it's a... really not that close. Guys, what's going on? <laughs> We're here. Fitness Business Summit. Day number three. It feels like a day number 30, if I'm being super honest. It has been a long week. Teddy and I flew in Tuesday night. Um, we shopped on Wednesday, but I won't tell you what we shopped for. Uh, then we came down, we dropped you fire. Shopped, I watched. I shopped, Teddy watched. <laughs> we dropped fire at the Pit Body World Conference Thursday. We spit fire on the Fitness Business Summit stage. And now we're talking to you. Update number three, right? This is number three, performance to aesthetics. First of all, the response that you guys have given us, the, the love you've shown to Amanda. Oh, sure. um, I know you've been receiving a lot of DMs about the process. You've had a lot of questions about the process and really a lot of support telling you how great you're doing. That's been pretty cool. It's been really awesome because a ton of people have reached out giving me like support or asked questions or like might even be on like the same journey. Yeah. So I think it's been amazing to see how many people related to what you were going through yeah. and then instantly we're like oh my, oh my gosh, gosh I like do this. this is amazing how yeah. do I do it they connected with that broken feeling yeah. they connected with okay I really want the aesthetics but I'm finally ready to leave the performance piece like I think a lot of people didn't necessarily have their eyes open to the fact that it was no. the pursuit of still maintaining performance that was holding them back in the aesthetic realm well, it's a really hard mindset shift. I mean, as you've seen with me, like I struggled with the amount of volume at first. I thought that the volume was like, oh my gosh, I'm not doing enough. I'm not doing enough because I had that mindset of like CrossFit, more, better, more, better, more, better. And like, honestly, like I'm on a stair master for like um, 120 minutes a week or a treadmill walking, which is like, I mean, it's a joke. It's very low when you intensity. think about yeah. what I'm Relative to what you're for. used to. Right, exactly. When I say joke, I mean, like, yeah, exactly. But it, I mean, my body's totally responding. And so guys, if you don't understand what we're talking about, um, head back to the channel, check out parts one and two. We talk about the, you know, the, basically the stress adaptation principle and the fact that Amanda, because of the, uh, the amount of volume and the intensity of the volume she was performing, um, that's actually what was holding her back in her pursuit of, of extreme aesthetics and you know we say extreme we reference it in part two you know she's trying to achieve a look that probably won't be maintainable all the time but you know we're, we're showing you guys this is what it takes to achieve the pinnacle of aesthetics and then we'll transition out of that and we'll show you something that is maintainable so let's give you guys an update as to where she is you know part two we had made some changes we were being patient part three guys she has hit that elusive whoosh uh, yeah. And a lot of you guys are like, what the fuck is a whoosh? But <laughs> it, it is, to my knowledge, a clinical term, actually. Um, so in a fat loss phase, it will go slow, it will go slow, it will feel like you're plateaued, and boom, out of nowhere, overnight, the scale goes down like four pounds, and oh, yeah. fat loss accelerates. Guys, that is what we know as a whoosh. So one morning, I got a picture from Amanda, and she's like, holy shit, I lost four pounds overnight. I yeah. think it was four pounds, it right? Was, and it was like after a rest day, and it was after a repeat day. And I woke up, and I'm like, holy shit. It's like four pounds off the scale. I'm like, that's the lowest low that I've seen in. It was a new low. Oh, it was a new low. It was a new, it was low, a new low in this whole yeah. process. So we saw a new low, and the question is, are we going to maintain it? Was it a fluke? Well, we maintained it for three days. We refed, and now we continue to see new lows. So we have really hit our stride in the fat loss uh, pers pursuit. And now, prior to that, we did make one change. Um, we brought your protein intake up by 10 grams, and we dropped 20, 25 carbs. We dropped, but then we also dropped fat. Too. Okay, so we dropped like 15 carbs and like five fats. Yes. Okay, so we dropped 15 grams of carbohydrates, we dropped five grams of fat, and we increased her protein by 10 grams. So what I saw was, calorically speaking, we weren't in a bad place. Her body comp just wasn't moving the way we wanted it to go. Um, because we're dropping the protein-sparing nutrients, the carbohydrates and the fats, I gave her a little bit more dietary protein to support that lean tissue retention while aggressively pursuing just not having as much circulating insulin from the carbohydrates obviously you do well on low-fat diets so just having to create that caloric deficit um, so really guys not a simple not, not a big shift we didn't overhaul anything she's still refeeding Monday Thursday um, I mean, my calorie intake relative to most people is like they're like that's pretty high yeah you know yeah, and and you're still 
Two, like 2,000 yeah. calories yeah. right around, there. So yeah. still 2,000 calories, dropping weight um, consistently, but really consistently dropping body fat. I mean, the cosmetics, and, and we'll include a picture right here, um, and she's really like at, at the leanest she's been. So yeah. that's been amazing. So the question is, great, what now? Um, we haven't made a change since that whoosh happened. We kept going. Um, you know, guys, if it's not broke, please do not fix it. Um, you know, we've just continued to see the number come down and down. Now, we are starting to see that number fizzle out a little bit. We're starting just like literally the last two or three days. We're starting to see it slow down. Yes, we monitor every day. It's what we do in aesthetics. Um, but I want to point out one more change that I made with your coach um, relative to the training that uh, we might need to discuss. And that was, I took a look at what her output was. Um, I increased her low intensity steady state cardio. So we went to 120 minutes per week, um, broken up however she wants, as long as she's doing the same output. Um, because guys, remember, it's calories in, calories out for the week. Cardio is just caloric burn. So we built that. Um, then I also looked at her interval days. So I had prescribed two interval days. Her coach had it done still in a, a CrossFit-like setting. Yeah. And we know Amanda has a hard time pulling back on, uh, on intensity. On intensity. And so I look at it, it was prescribed moderate intensity. It was prescribed to be very aerobic. I know Amanda, and I know it definitely <laughs> wasn't aerobic. It was bordering on CrossFit it pace. It probably was. So, so we took a step back and I said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to give her a certain number of reps. It, it's been anywhere from eight to 15 um, at a certain time, so 20 to 30 seconds, maximal intensity, and then recovery is about 60% max heart rate. And, and so we've done anywhere to eight to 12 to 15 reps, just depending on the day, depending on the week. Uh, and we implemented that as her sprint day versus just strictly CrossFit. And it was right around that time, combined with the dietary shift, combined with the recovery, boom, everything hit. Everything kind of hit all uh, So the change that we're gonna make upcoming is we are going to decrease um, a little bit more carbohydrate. I think her fats are sufficient now. We're gonna pull more from carbs. I'm not gonna up her protein again, but instead of having refeed space Monday, Thursday, I now think the metabolic response from the refeed needs 48 hours. So guys, there's research out there that says a refeed for 24 hours really isn't effective at re-stimulating the metabolism. Now we've just been doing it Monday, Thursday as calorie control and something for her to look forward to bi-weekly as a high day. Please keep in mind this was psychological. She may not have known that, but on my end, it was purely psychological the way we spaced it. Now we're looking at metabolic effect. So I need those refeeds together. What she's looking at is Monday, Tuesday will be her 48 hour refeed. Calories will be much closer to maintenance. And then the other five days, her deficit is getting much larger. So we'll be really pushing fat loss in that window. Um, that's the change you'll see made. You'll hear about that in part four. I'll give you those exact numbers because we just haven't gotten there yet. The final thing I want to talk about, guys, is patience. This has not been a short process. Um, in fact, it's going to get even longer. But I think a lot of people that get into a fat loss journey think six weeks, 10 weeks, 12 weeks, 18 weeks. Um, this could go 30 weeks, and that's okay. Guys, she's done this in a very stressful time in her life, right? There's been a lot of life stress. She's also done this with still maintaining her sanity relative to eating out and doing things that are very difficult in a fat loss phase and that are much easier to get away with in a CrossFit type training modality like we talked about last time. Yeah. Um, so talk to us about that piece. How hard has it been to stay patient? It's been really hard to stay patient just because, I mean, I'm, well, I'm really stressed out right now. Like, let's just be real. Um, and for a second, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't even know how to get through this because you're also in a deficit. You're hungry. You're hangry. Let's put it that way. You're for hangry. Sure. I get those nasty texts. It's I'm okay. like, dude, um, your sleep obviously isn't as great yeah. now. I mean, at first it started to get better, but now, you know, I, I wake up hungry sometimes in the middle of the night. I wake up to pee multiple times in the middle of the night um, but it's, it's been really hard and sometimes I beat myself up because I'm like what the hell I'm never gonna be able to get lean like this is crazy and I'm like when is this over when is this over because I just want like some end in sight so yeah and so guys I think a lot of people want that they want that end line in sight and so from a psychology perspective what does that tell us what she's doing now is not sustainable right however we will continue, we will get to the end line, but I think she has to now start looking at the picture as a whole and say, okay, great. When I get to the end line, we definitely have to be armed 
with a reverse diet, we definitely have to be armed with a strategy to get you back to something that is sustainable, that balances out feeling good with the way you want to look. And so those of you guys that are going through this process with Amanda, those of you guys that are going to come into shredding season, and I use that in air quotes because we're changing the name, those of you guys that are going to come into something like that, please, please, please understand that as one phase of your dietary protocol throughout the year, remember nutritional periodization. Yes, you can get super shredded. Yes, there are consequences that will come with getting super shredded, but yes, you must be building an exit strategy to bring yourself out. So guys, this series isn't gonna end when Amanda gets shredded and when Amanda does her photo shoot. This series will continue to show you her reverse diet and what it looks like to come out. I just wanna put that in your guys' head today. So guys, there we go, part three. Done. <laughs> She's crushing it. I'm super proud of you. Uh, Do a twirl. You know, Do a twirl. Do a twirl. Do a twirl. There we go. <laughs> no, I can't even see anything anyway. <laughs> so, but we'll put, uh, well, we've already put the picture in here. They've already seen it. Yeah. Um, but no, seriously, I mean, I'm super proud of her. The level, the attention to detail, it's been there. She's done everything she's had to do. Um, but if you, if you look back at this interview and you really think about what we talked about, communication here has been amazing. Communication with your programming coach, Brian, has been amazing. It's, um, and it's that's really what it comes down forth, to. It's yeah. a lot of back and forth. So I'm looking at pictures more frequently than ever. Um, and guys, that's what it takes. So those of you guys that are out there that are looking for the extreme cosmetics, welcome to uh, a really deep insight. Congratulations to Amanda, part three, we're out. <laughs>